Hey everyone, this is James Patrick with Slam Academy. I just got a really good question and I want to take a few minutes to address it. The question was, what if I want to design some sounds or even write a track and just kind of build a structure that is going to consistently generate interesting content and I won't have to sit here and worry about what key signature I'm in so much and the sequence. I mean oftentimes sitting here punching in notes with a pencil tool onto the grid here is a little stifling, I feel. I have to think about what's the base note of my scale I'm in, etc. Sometimes I don't want to think about that. I just want to like hit notes, you know. So I've got an operator on a track here and what I want to show you how to do is how to build your own generative MIDI effect rack, in particular based around a MIDI step sequencer. This is a really fun demonstration, really fun exercise, and in no way did I invent this presentation. This is just an idea that many other people have had in the past and I've just modified it a tiny bit. So what I did is I punched in a bunch of 16th notes because I think I want 16th note resolution on my step sequencer. So I'll get a note every 16th. It's pretty straightforward. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a pitch effect. With the pitch effect I can now of course modulate the pitch. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to group that pitch effect by hitting Command-G. Now I show the group's macros. This is a MIDI effect rack. What I can do now is I can take the pitch and I'm going to send it out to a macro. Now I'm going to go into mapping mode and I'm going to choose my range. 256 notes of pitch range is a little hot. I'm going to go with 48. So I'll go negative 24 to 48. Or negative 24 to 24. So now So this is a good start. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show the chain list of the rack. This is where the parallel routing happens. I'm going to rename this one. I'm going to hit duplicate and rename it two. Duplicate, rename three. Duplicate, rename four, and so on. Oops. 7, Command D, Command R, 8, Enter. Okay, so now I have eight of those pitch effects, and they're all in parallel and all with the same pitch knob. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show the device. With each of these, I'm going to map them to their respective macros. So this is going to go to number 2, this is going to go to number 3, this is going to go to number 4, this is going to go to number 5, and this seems a little anal, but um, you're going to be really happy with the results in just a moment once we get this thing working. So right now we have kind of eight steps, all with their own pitches and a four octave range. But when I hit play, these are all just going to be repeating over and over. It's kind of like playing a chord. So what I'm going to do now is you saw me expose the chain list here. This is the really cool part. I'm going to click on one and go down, over, down, over, over, down, over, 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 down, over, 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 <laughs> and so on. So now I have a step within my chain selector for each of the steps of my sequencer. Now as you can probably imagine, I touch this, I control click on it, and I can say show automation. And now with every 16th note, I'm going to have it progress up to the next pitch device in the sequence. So I have eight, right? So I'm just going to go ahead and have that repeat twice, so it'll be like an eight step sequencer. Pretty cool, right? So now I can change these pitches, and if I have them all the way down, they're going to be like bass notes. It's going to be like super low bass. But I want to be able to turn notes off. So look, I'm going to go to each of these ones and go pitch, pitch. I'm taking the mute switch now for the chain, and I'm sending it to its corresponding value. Six, seven, eight. And now I'm going to open mapping mode again, and this is something I probably could have done with the very first macro, and then just carried it over in the duplicate. But with each of these, I'm going to set the min to zero, or the min to one, and the max to zero. Just going through with each of these and just saying one. So what that's going to do is as soon as that macro crosses one, or zero actually, and hits one, it's going to turn on or off the step.
right? So this is slick. So now what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to take this whole device, I'm going to rename it, I'm going to call it 1 through 8, because it's at 8 steps. Now I'm going to duplicate the chain, and I'm going to rename this one 9 through 16. Now I'm going to take 9 through 16, I'm going to drop it into the rack, I'm going to call this one 9 through 16. This I'm going to play all the time. And now I've got these steps ready to cascade. I'll put this on nine, show automation. Now right here I can just do this. Oops. One too many command twos there. There we go. Now I need to modulate this as well. Show automation, do that same eight step move. We're pretty much done. Get my grid resolution down to 16th notes, of course. Command one, command two will change my grid resolutions. I'm just gonna make this thing just free run. I could just unlink the envelope and change it to 8 16th notes, but here I think this will be good enough. So how I use this now is I hide this. So now to top it off, to really finish this thing off, I'd probably put a scale at the end of this. Maybe I'd even group the scale, show the macros and call this key select. Now I'll show the chain list. Look at this, a scale switcher. Let's hit hot swap and choose C major. C major, duplicate. C mine, hot swap. Right, so now I'm going to do the same exact thing where I'm going to have a switcher, but this one I'm going to manually run. Let's go with one more scale. So I'm just going to go like pentatonic or something, just to keep it simple. Now, with this chain selector, we're not going to automate it. We're going to put it on a macro. Now, if I move this, I'm way out of the range, right? So I got to go up to mapping mode again and set this down to three. Now I'm in. I got to select key. I went to three. I got to go to two. Zero, because zero is a number. So if I wanted to make this really funky, I'd probably throw on a 16th note feel swing. I can throw a drum machine in here just for fun. So look what I got now, I got a 16 step sequencer with a chord select. down a little bit. There you go, guys. So there you go. There's the MIDI step sequencer.
kind of confusing at first, but really you just got to know that the chain selector allows you to manually or through automation select which of these parallel chains is active and when. I just stacked that 9 through 16 on there to make sure that we're all rocking. To really kill this, if I had a push or APC, I might even key map or MIDI map or something to these two racks. So I just have one selector to go between my two different steps. Or maybe even if I had something like a fader fox controller or something that's just knobs, I could have my own dedicated little sidecar step sequencer for my bass line. Maybe even a separate knob to change my bass note or my root key. So that's how I do it. And hopefully you've come up with a cooler way to use this and share it back with me. Again, like I said, none of these ideas are mine. I just love being a part of this creative process and sharing ideas with all of you. Be a part of mine at slamacademy.com. That's www.slamacademy.com. All we do is have fun and make music. Hit us up.